Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Kagwa Apollo, and I'm going to be taking in oil and gas. This is our first lecture, the introductory lecture. Uh, we are going to begin by looking at the basic concepts that we find in oil and gas. These are the definitions that we may find we are going to use here and there. And uh, members should get used to them if we are to, to move on smoothly. Uh, before I talk about that, oil and gas is a key interest area in Uganda here due to the mere fact that we have uh, discovered oil in several parts of the country. And when we discover it, we find that most of the work to exploit or to, uh, you know, the work of exploring oil is now in the hands of foreigners. Because among us to the local community, People lack expertise. People lack that experience and knowledge to tap into the sector. Just of recent, two years ago before we entered this COVID, when the debate of the construction of the oil pipeline from Bunyolo to Tang in Tanzania came in, we realized that Uganda, the, the, Uganda had no skilled manpower, that is masonry, artisans, and other people needed, the, the technicians, drivers, needed to operate the equipment and to do that technical work on the construction of the oil pipeline. Yet, we, we cry here and there that we don't have jobs. And Ugandans, need to be trained in order to tap into that sector. When we look at the sector itself, we find that the many beneficiaries should be Ugandans and these are engineers because we need electrical engineers. They are needed for, more, uh, for most of the work. We need civil engineers because this, this is construction. We need mechanical engineers because we are dealing with the, a lot of mechanical work on the pipelines. Then we need the, we, we need the architects because you know when you look at all these plans of the construction and what require architects and even water engineers. When you look at most of the work drainage, etc., we find that your profession fits directly into what we need in the oil and gas sector. That's why we are supposed to train uh, such that at the end of the day, we get people who can uh, work into this sector. At the end of this unit, uh, everyone is expected to know the main components or the concepts used in oil and gas. Uh, we talk about the exploration of oil and gas, uh, beginning from um, carrying out studies on the possibility of oil. And then we go on to drilling, purification, uh, transportation, and the, uh, the overall business of oil and gas. You know, we can't trade in this business unless we know the behaviors of oil and gas. Then if we know, then we can explain well how gas and oil systems work or operate and how oil is disputed in the, the earth strata because that's where we get it from. And our work, actually that is the task we are going to, we are going into as Ugandans to explore oil. That, that's why I'm expecting all of you to take an interest uh, in this unit. We shall have some elements of uh, chemistry, physical, in organic uh, or physical basically and organic chemistry and even other general general things which we may, we may just find in life 
uh, of us, our life of science, like in physics concepts, um, chemistry, and some elements of bio uh, systems. So once again, I, I want uh, an attentive class. Let us try to go on and explore uh, the unit uh, in order to benefit very well out of what we are going to be discussing. Uh, when you look at the concepts that we are looking at here, the first one is petroleum. Uh, we, we all of you know what petroleum is. We talk about petroleum money to get up again, up with Chima. I'm after the petrol, Okuva Pali Kushel, Ovaku Toto, Abamchem is Okubanga money. But here we are saying petroleum refers to solids, liquids, and gaseous hydrocarbons. I'm, I'm talking about the three states of matter, uh, liquid, solid, and gas. Those are the three states. And when we talk about petroleum, the hydrocarbons exist in all these three states. And I'm going to talk about these hydrocarbons and I'm going to be giving out some examples. I will say hydrocarbons here, they may be gases, they may be liquids, they may be solids. And these exist in their natural state in the subsurface strata. And the gases, basically, we have alkanes. Uh, you know, I've been talking about alkanes. Uh, alkanes, these are um, carbon linked to carbon with a single bond. You know, carbon has the, that property of multiple bonding. That's why sometimes we may have carbon uh, linking to another carbon by one bond, that is a single bond. Then we can have carbon linking to another carbon by two bonds, and that's what we call a double bond. And it also, carbon can link to another carbon using three bonds, that is a triple bond. But when you look at petroleum hydrocarbons here, basically majority of them, a carbon is linked to another carbon by a single bond, and that is what we call alkanes. When you talk about alkanes, uh, basically now we can, we can have uh, methane. When you look at the screen I've shared, there is one carbon atom and the three hydrogen, uh, four hydrogen atoms because the valence of carbon is four, meaning that carbon, uh, carbon in each state it has two electrons in the innermost orbital uh, and four electrons in the outermost orbital, which is two for when you look at the ordinary electronic configuration which we looked at at four level. Now when we have when we have not go, uh, we have not entered into the deeper. Uh, understanding of these orbitals that we cover at a level. But at all level, we said that uh, the first orbital has two electrons. The second one should have eight. Uh, so if carbon, which is six atoms, it is having two atoms in the electron, the first innermost orbital, and then four in the outermost orbital, which implies that uh, uh, it has, it, in, it requires four more electrons in order to to be stable or to, to obtain what we call an a stable state, which sometimes they call an octet. That's why you see that in whatever carbon does, it combines with the four hydrogen atoms. That is visible when we talk about, um, we look at this methane, it is having one carbon, but bonded to four, of, to four hydrogen atoms. You know, hydrogen has one atom, which is, uh, its atomic number is one meaning that it also needs one to form an okay, stable state. Uh, now, uh, when, when it shares electrons with the carbon, uh, carbon itself, uh, hydrogen itself will obtain its stable state. So that what, the kind of bonding here is covalent bonding because electrons are being shared. That's why we see that methane has that structure and it is light, highly flammable. Methane, actually, this is what we call natural gas. It is highly flammable because it is light. 
when you look at uh, its uh, its structure, it has one carbon atom and four hydrogen atoms. Then ethane itself has two carbon atoms. It is also a gaseous hydrocarbon. Then we have propane. There are three hydrocarb uh, three carbon atoms. Uh, butane. There are four hydrogen atoms. Uh, carbon atoms. Carbon atoms. There are four. And pentane. There are five carbon atoms. But when you look at the bonding everywhere, it is a single bonding. So those are the gaseous uh, hydrocarbons we have. And when we talk about these ones, we find that um, they are alkanes. And as I said, alkanes, these are carbon atoms bonded to others by a single bond. Now, under the liquid, carb or li liquid components, we have, um, we have crude oil. We, this is oil which is unrefined. And in most cases, when we, we get this one from the underground by drilling, then we take it to the lab for purification. And this is now the work which is going to take place in Tanga, deep, deep down in Tanzania, where the purification is going to take place. This crude oil, after uh, being extracted from the oil wells, it is, bit, is going to be taken by pipes to the place of purification, which is Tanzania. That's why we have this uh, pipeline that is going to run from Uganda to PZ, where purification is going to take place. So the, the, the purification of this crude oil, which is liquid in nature, will result into products that we always get, like uh, kerosene, uh, petrol, diesel. It is a game after get to gain and to with the petrol station. So. That is what we we we, talk, we that is what we refer to when we talk about crude oil. I've not given any structure of crude oil because uh, this is in its natural state and and pure. Uh, it requires to be purified in order to 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 get the products that we always use. Now, the the, the solid hydrocarbons still under uh, what we call petroleum uh, hydrocarbons include. Uh, uh, substances uh, like um, like a, a coal, coal to mukoze some fumba. It is a solid fuel used in many 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 countries, most especially especially Europe. One or two tera nyo mukufumbi sa amanda ne ne inku chivola anti musiba mute mevi vida namuagala ya amanda ne inku kubanga bi nevi mu chemu bimani. So coal is not so common here, but uh, it is a solid hydrocarbon. Uh, then we have gas hydrates. Gas hydrates are also not so common. They are common to those countries like uh, Russia, etc. These are ices of gas. And then we can we also have other solid substances, which we call viscoplastics uh, or viscoplastic solids. One of them is tar, that is T-A-R. And then asphalt, which is ASPHALT. These are examples of solid hydrocarbons. When we go back to our definitions that we've been talking about, uh, we find that um, we have uh, what we call petroleum operations. Ginojemirim, jetu yisam petroleum, okuvalu tumusimeri. Waka yetu musinga na mumadu kaje tu mukula fenga abantu abain abamu kuzesa abamu abaini eviduka abagalo kugula yo oilo gumteka mumotoka abagalo kugula yo amftaget tala which we call kerosene. So in in a brief we can say that petroleum operations covers activities including drilling. Now when talk about drilling. This equipment is what we call a, an oil rig. Oil rig is used to drill oil from the underground. When, when you look at the, the screen which I'm share, I've shared on uh, the slide, which is, is current on the screen, that is the oil rig, which we, after identifying oil, it is what we use to drill oil from the underground. Uh, actually, we can also look at it here. Uh, it's layout. 
uh, having the derrick, the top drive, uh, uh, different parts that enter into the, 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 into the underground. Now, I'll give you an assignment and explain how the oil rig works and how it operates. That is going to be your personal work. Uh, you do it. Uh, you, you look at how an oil rig operates and how it is used for drilling. Then you make some notes about it. Then you are going to share with me. That is our first assignment. Uh, and when you look at uh, the, the slides that I gave you, the, the, the first presentation, um, this is the oil and gas reservoir. A oil one you to and that what you see on top, those are oil um, uh, oil rigs. They enter deep down. You see where we have the cup, the, 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 our rock on the surface. Deep, deep down, we have what we call the cup rock, covering the free gas cup. That free gas cup comes on top uh, of the oil itself. You know that that is the oil which we always get down in its impure form. Uh, and we take to the labs for purification. Now, yeah, very one see. Go for the cup rock cover. No, it's a free gas cup. We are going to look at these interfaces as we are going on. Uh, then we look at the salt water down. And then the reservoir rock. All these are rocks. And when you find that we use the, 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 we, we use the oil rig to go and get the oil from the underground. Uh, I, I shared this uh, on the, 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 the handout which I gave you. When we go back to the concepts which we are discussing, we are saying um, the petroleum industry is divided uh, into three main streams. Uh, before, I, before I talk about that, the operations included drilling. I've talked about the drilling rig which we talk about, uh, which we use to drill oil. Then there is production, uh, production, uh, and then transportation. Uh, transportation is where we, uh, we what, what do we use to take the oil where it's supposed to go, and then with the storage uh, of oil. And we shall try to talk about transportation, how oil is transported, how oil is uh, being utilized. It is all these are coming, and we are going to, to do that. We said that the oil industry is divided into three main streams uh, where we have the upstream oil industry, the midstream, and the downstream. So we are going to put our emphasis on these different types of the, 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 the types of the oil industry, the upstream oil industry, the midstream, and the downstream. So that's where we are going to put our most of our attention uh, in this.